higher files are looking for uh, as much fidelity as they can get in listening to uh, audio systems. I would consider myself an audiophile just because I've taken that step past going to, say, an electronic store per se and just buying a speaker off the shelf. If I'm going to get more speakers, I'm going to want to buy all the components and construct them myself to get a higher like, clarity using higher end parts. You can get more bang for your buck. The, all the acrylic glass was laser cut. All I had to do was measure it out in Adobe Illustrator and just basically draw the form that I wanted draw where I wanted all the screwing points to be, and then I only had to make two different panels. Now, the middle panel on this one does have my crest on it that was laser cut and laser etched into it, so that way, technically, I have three individual panels, but it was as simple as getting a quarter-inch thick acrylic glass, cutting it, doing a rough cut so that way it'll fit into the laser cutter and then putting it in there and loading the illustrator document and just letting it go to town on the panels. I would have to buy the components and construct them myself in order to be truly happy. I've got a range of speakers that go from being six feet tall and three to four hundred pounds uh, and just ridiculously oversized sort of like monuments to sound to trying to get as much sound as possible out of these very tiny kinds of designs. I, I started big uh, just, just to see how far I could take it with this kind of design. Um, at school there's actually another version of this that's two woofers taller and actually goes all the way up to the ceiling. Um, but here uh, it's just a big ribbon, top to bottom, and a column of woofers. So the goal then was to see uh, what this could do, and then go to a smaller version of it and see how much of that original sound I could preserve. And I'm a really big fan of these open baffle uh, dipole speakers. When you don't have a cabinet, the back of the drivers fire into air, and the back of these tweeters and mid-range panels fire into air as well. And as a result of that, sound comes out in both directions, wraps around, and where the sound touches on the sides above and below the speaker, it cancels out. And a lot of people will describe the effect as sort of like wearing headphones, um, but with speakers in front of you. This sub was actually part of the speaker design class that Aaron Pellucci had, where everyone kind of built their own set of speakers, where I had already built a set of speakers and I really needed a sub to go with it. So these are actually two completely enclosed different boxes. They are glued and nailed together and sanded to where everything looks flush. There is a 10 inch sub and an 8 inch sub. Um, they are wired completely independently, controlled through a separate interface, and despite the size of it, for reference, this bigger speaker here weighs 80 pounds. This little sub weighs 150. I, I broke a friend and a Jeep with a design that I built. This is going to sound way over the top. Uh, so one of the ideas of box speakers, traditional box designs, is you just want to hear the electrical signal, but you don't want any box resonance. And one way to get rid of boxer resonance is to simply make it heavier. So the heavier the mass, the less it's going to resonate. Um, so I took that idea too far, and I built two 600-pound subwoofers. So they, you know, they were stacked in three. So they're just like a box, box, box. Each one's concrete, and they couple together to form one bigger subwoofer. And then another side, box, box, box. Um, so the first thing that happened was I had them on the second story of a house, which was candy delivered out over a porch. And when the ceiling started to crack, we realized that the, the cantilever of the house was starting to tip because of the weight that wasn't properly supported. So we had to jack up the front of the house and put new pillars on the porch. 
Um, and the second thing that happened was we moved um, from, I, I moved uh, to a place that the speakers had to go up three flights of stairs and at 200 pounds a, 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 a section times six ultimately, uh, the friend that was helping me carry them got a hernia and the Jeep that I borrowed to move them in broke a leaf spring. It doesn't always mean custom belt speakers have to be heavier, but in this case the sub, there's going to be less flex in the material, so you're going to get a cleaner sound out of it. This is currently what I'm working on, which is an attempt to see how small I can get and still sort of do like 95% of what the biggest speakers can do. So they're, even though these look different, the little sibling of those big speakers. So what I was able to do is take the door off, build this flange where you can see the bolts, um, and go inside this closet and put this four inch thick upholstery foam and line the whole closet with, the, with this really thick foam to dampen any reflections inside, and then build this board and behind this panel here are three 18-inch uh, woofers, and they're all wired together, and they're firing out into the room and on the inside. It's about a 2,000-liter cabinet, which means that it's got a lot of internal volume, and the bigger the cabinet, the deeper the potential for deep bass out of it, right? So something like this is buried soft to the side. It's crossed over very, very, very low. It only plays about the bottom half of the of the lowest octave. It's a lot of quality bass because the drivers are really good and, and the baffles are really thick and the cabinet on the inside is literally cinder block and concrete. So the walls of the cabinet are um, incredibly rigid and, and have a lot of mass so there's no panel vibration. The sub is just kind of tucked in to the sound so it's not overwhelming or overpowering everything, but when it's really, really turned up just to kind of get silly and see what it can do, these actual ceiling tiles will start to uh, lift up and down. So this, this thing ha actually has the ability to pressurize the room and affect the physical structure of the room.